Yo, this is Bull in the China Shop TV. I'm sitting here with my man Len, like and King Kennels. Uh, OG in the American Bully world. Um, this is the first installment of 10 Minutes with the OGs. We're currently at the Allentown Peace, Love, and Bully Fest. Fest six. Right? Six. six years this has been going on. Uh, I just introduce yourself, Len. Tell us how long you've been in American Bullies and uh, tell us what, how you've been involved since day one. Now, I happen to know this information already. My man's been involved since day one. <laughs> I mean, I've been involved with the bullies since they started. We helped start the bullies, you know. I was part of the original forte, you would say. I was in that first meeting where everybody hears about. They keep talking about that meeting. I was one of the many that was in that first meeting to go down about making these American bullies. And then from there, we just responded over. I mean, in the All beginning, right, I was involved right with the start yeah, there. So that helps with it portrays over there. making the ABKC, Standard making champion. the Atomic Dog help them blow up the EE -E to what it became and then moving forward from there. So all of them apart is where it all started from, you know what I mean? It's just inevitable. Wherever it was at, we were there. We were the ones doing the initial ground humping. We were going to pet expos and other places just taking Xerox copies of ABKC stuff and then going to show people what it was, spending the weekends, weeks out there pushing the breed, doing the dub shows, doing the hot import nights, going to all the crazy bike events, car events, seeing the athletes, going to everyone's house and making it happen is what we did to get it to go. The breed developed with all this getting together and that's how it initiated. It didn't just start with like these dogs were there and moved forward. How a lot of these people are doing a lot of stuff nowadays. People are building breeds off a of money base. That's why they're going and they're falling. Where we built for our dogs and what we look for, and then we got involved with everybody from the east coast to the west, the north to south. The, no matter what bloodline you had, we got everybody there and we orchestrated a system. We were like, listen, we're gonna start breeding these dogs to this. We're gonna start keeping this. We're gonna switch between here, and then we're gonna also cap the price. We're gonna start calling them American bullies. We're gonna create a register. Street, and then we're going to start selling these dogs at $2,000 a piece on the line. No matter what you do on the backside, you never advertise under $2,000. And that's right. where we started it at. Yeah. So, so you were involved, you were involved not only come, help, help them come up with the name, but setting a market for the breed also. Setting the market and everything. You had to set a market to draw that attention. And you have to keep it when you're growing up. You have to make the value of what you're giving out have a limit. You know? That's why you're not going to have. It would have never went nowhere if somebody was out there selling dogs for 500 bucks and advertising it there. Because people would have just been buying that junk and not worrying about what it was. Like, why am I going to pay $2,000? When you went to everybody's website and anywhere, it's talking about from top peep, uh, Top 100 pit bull heat, the uh, top blue dogs, all that different sites. You were clicking on any one of them links. Every person selling dogs in there was charging two grand, right. two grand, two grand or up. You never seen a dog advertise under that, and that set the market on what we did. Now from there, it escalated all the way up to like you know some dogs are sold to a hundred thousand, a couple hundred thousands. You know, it's, the number went astronomical. But initially, we had to set that mark. And then we had to set it to the point where you're telling everybody, they call you, no, this is an American bully. Explain to them what it is. Not get sided and be like, well, no, no, it's a blue pit bull. Because at that time, blue pit bulls was the same. That's what everybody wanted, just a blue dog. Right. And it wasn't like they didn't care what it was. That's all they wanted. So to get people to agree to that and step away, because these people are taking their, their livelihood and monies and taking a risk. Because, you know, you're going from having something that's paper to taking it in a registry that's not there. But we're telling you it's going to be a future. Right. To where everybody sees what the future is now. You get what I'm saying? But at that time, everybody jumped out there. It wasn't a lot of people that wanted to do it. And then later on, people seeing this come on. There were some people that was in that meeting that was avid and against it. People were like, nah, we're not going to do it. I'm going to still call them large pit bulls or I'm going to call them this or whatever, how to do it. Yeah, I mean, bully, even bully like, style pits, right? That was the big thing could, back yeah, then. Yeah, back then. Like, even Pat, like Pratt. Pratt was the first one who was like, nah, we're not really going to call these American bullies. I'm going to call them my style of pit bulls. You get what I'm saying? Right. So, like, different people were still doing that. But then as they seen it grow, people converted over to start using our name and saying, yo, they're American bullies. And that was the difference, you know? And that's what we had to do to really get it to take off. Now from there, once it took off, it went running. Right. You know what I mean? So after after it, it takes off, what's the first real dog for you that put you kind of in the midst of things as far as being in the show ring, 
and doing these stack offs because just like we're doing here today at the Allentown Bully Fest, stack offs were a big part of how this breed started, how, every, how the popularity grew. So what was the dog for you that you brought out and just shut shit down with? The first dog that I ever brought out that really took notification, that really shut it down for me personally, that I would have said that it drew, that drew the attention in, that I was taking them everywhere. And I would say that it was a product that I could say this is a product of an American Bully would be that dog Colossus I had. Colossus. Colossus. You know, so that a, blue a lot of people would think it would be uh, Hannibal. Hannibal, yeah. yeah. But, but was, it was before that. It, it was, was even before that. that. Well, see, that's how the transition of how I got Hannibal came about because I had Hannibal's, Hannibal's mom, Passion. I had hit her brother, Gamma, which was Colossus's dad. Right. And that was off of Muggsy, One Autumn Rainy Day, you know, uh, tw you know, 21 Blackjack, uh, Blackout, and all them other old dogs. And that's how I rolled from Cairo and everything else. And then once yeah, this I had is, this, Colossus, is, this is old school foundation razors. That razors that shit. Right razors. Old, old. This is back. In fact, Colossus's uh, dad, Gamma, was like the first role. That was his blood was still One Autumn Rainy Day was off of JMJ Shut Up and Put Up and everybody else. And that goes back to Gaff. You know what I mean? That was right. Gary's dog and all that. You know. And that's how it rolled out. So that generation was the first breach brand of, you know, edge and, you know, real old school shit like that. And then from there, it trains out over. I took that to a, a Blue Diamond daughter that was one of Jake's dogs, you know what I mean? And then braided out, and that's how I got classes. Now, Jake, Jake from where? True Blues. True Blues. True Blues. Channels. Jake's, just to, just you know to be I mean? clear on that, shout out to Jake from True Blues. Jake with Jake. So, OJ. At, fast forward into 2016. You you were an MC for the ABKC at one time. You did a lot of ABKC shows, big events. Mm -hmm. What do you have going on in 2016 right now? How involved are you in the bully world, uh, American Bullies, ABKC, and what do you got going other than that? Well, you know, the MC stuff was a way we had to transition over because of how the shows were. We were doing music, we had, and it was like an entertainment thing for me coming from the club world. So I'm like, we're going to entertain these people. Right. But then once we got to the point, and then we started spawning off, we had other MCs like Bully the Kid and ever all them other guys or whatever their names are, they started doing it. All them, Ralphie and everyone. They, then I was like, let me step away from that and then walk away. But then as in 2016, where we're at right now is several years ago, me and Oscar both left the lead edge and stuff like that because David Cruz wanted to go their own way with it, with their vision, which they started his own thing. And we created our own thing called the WBA. So from that point, we grew it the way we wanted to. We're all about hanging out, family, you know, partying, and then putting down pure dogs. We want people to just breed it better. Every litter you do, we want the next litter to be better than that litter. And then we want you as carrying traits. Like all of our dogs, you know, is are working dogs. We put that out there at WBA, showing exercises, showing them working, right. showing the movement, showing what these dogs are. Because to us, not having that is like a flaw. You know what I mean? People don't look at it like that. You know, not every... People get into assuming and saying your dog has to work and they get an idea as a pit bull. No, there's working dog uh, Rottweilers, there's working dog Masters, there's other working dogs. There's a level of work. These dogs just don't work, you know what I mean? We prefer to still keep that in there, but we also want the dogs to be better. You know, we have our in and outs where each kennel we talk to each other and we're pushing each other to be better, but we're putting out a, a quality American Bulldog, I mean, American Bully product, you right. know what I mean? Uh, just like I say all the time on the podcast, breed to build better dogs. This is not something that I made up. This is not something that's new to the fucking game. These guys have been doing this, this stuff for 20, 20 years now. Exactly. So, um, where can people find you now, and what's the next show you guys have coming up? WBA, you, where, where's the next show you can find? We can find you. Right now, we're all working up. WBA, you're gonna find us everywhere. The next show we'll be at, we got the uh, Vegas show coming up January 28th. We'll be out there in Vegas, Las Vegas, Las right? Las Vegas, and then you also will have some of us down in the Atlanta Perry show. So we'll be in two areas because we're such a big area. But our next biggest show we're hosting March, uh, in March from the second to the seventh, we're throwing a big Cancun show, which is going to be a party weekend. We're going to throw that, and then we're going to spawn back in April and having our California WBA show in Cali in LA. So we're going to knock both of them shows off. Right Where there. can people find Len the Lycan King? You know, like. Most of the times, you know what I mean, I would shout out and be telling my website and everywhere else, but truly, you can find me on WBA.com. You get what I'm saying? Well, no, WorldBullyAssociation.com. You want to look over there, put the product. That's what we are about. You know what I mean? Lycan Kettles has always been there, and I ain't really, we're not here to put the dogs and stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? I'm right. producing dogs, I don't need everything, but I want my people produced. You know what I mean? I want right. them, I want people to see me, my peoples, and everybody else because I have that confidence in my group and what everybody's doing right now. So that's www.worldbully, 
spelled B U L L I E Association.com. Yep. Well, I, I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate you being the, the first installment of 10 Minutes with the OGs Always, bro. for Bull in the China Shop TV. This bro. is Ty Lumley signing out. See you next time, bitches. Peace.